Well, our clay dried for an hour or so, and the moisture was absorbed by the plaster. Then I flipped it over, and it dried for another hour. And it's just about right. It's a good consistency to work up. Just a little bit soft, but it's throwable and workable. Before we pick it up, I will uh, mention to you, I probably should have told you this in the first video, how I determine whether I want to mess with this or whether I think this is viable clay. I take someone that's in the field and I'll wet it. First thing I do is I want to run it between my finger and my thumb. And I have what I call the uh, greasy gritty scale and I can't explain it to you any better than that. The uh, clay has a very greasy feel and any uh, silica, sand or anything that's in it will have a gritty feel. So I need to feel the greasy gritty ratio. If there's too much sand in it, it'll be way too refractory and it simply won't melt. And I would have to add a lot of other things to it to make it a viable clay. So I just try to feel if it's about 70% or so greasy as opposed to 30% gritty or 35%. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm looking for. It doesn't mean that this is going to be perfect clay, but that's where I start. Anyway, we're going to pick it up here. I just run my wind through the door shut. I just uh, run my spatula under it. Make sure I don't pick up any of the plaster. That's not good. Okay. I'll pick it all up like that. It's wedgeable. Pretty nice. Pretty smooth. Now, is mixing your clay economical? Well, I hear arguments on both sides of that. But uh, I think it's really important that you know how. Uh, and I like to do as many things for myself as possible. And there's nothing gives you more satisfaction as a potter than taking clay that you've dug and uh, using it, making objects out of it, and... Uh, Firing them in your own homemade kill and just have a real personal contact with clay and the materials and the process and all that. Now, I, any clay that I dig, once I'm finished with it, if it takes more than about 25 or 30 percent other ingredients to make it into a clay, then I don't mess with it. I'll throw it in my scrap bin and mix it with some scrap clay or something, maybe. But I want to do as little to it as possible. Well, there we go. This sort of cursory wedging. Okay. I'm going to roll it out here. Hope you can see all this. Roll it out into a nice little rope here. Then, I'm going to do a little plasticity test on it. Take the ends of my rope here. And I'm going to start twisting them. Now, if the clay is short, that means it has too much organic matter, it has too much uh, grit, too much sand, it'll be short, and that and it'll start cracking along these edges. Then if it starts cracking real quick, then it's uh, you may have to add uh, ball clay to it to make it more plastic. This looks real good. I think that's about as good as I've ever seen for this little bit of mixing that we've done here so far. But that's pretty pretty good stuff there. So the plasticity test looks pretty good. Wedge it back in with it. This is still just a little bit sticky, but if you want to get it dried out to where you can throw it, you can just roll it out like this. And about a one and a half, two inch roll. Stand it up like that. And you can do this with a whole bunch of 
with more clay than this, you can put a whole bunch of these little inchworms standing up. This allows the air to circulate under and over this and dry it out. So within, oh, just a little bit of time, depending on the day, you get enough drying on this so that you can wedge it on up. When you're working with clay like this, you don't want any little stuff sticking up like this if you're trying to, to dry it. These little peaks will dry out first. And then when you mix it back in with the rest of the clay, you'll have all these little crumbs and little hard crumbs, and it will really affect the plasticity. So, you want this as smooth as possible, just like that. Now, we could let that dry for as long as we need to. I do have another one over here that I did earlier that I'll kind of show you. Set that aside to dry. Here's a piece I dried earlier. That's a little drier than that. I'm going to move my plaster now out of the way because I'm. it's already been saturated with water and it's getting kind of sticky so it needs to dry out again. There we go. First thing I'm going to do is I want to figure out how much shrinkage we have and I'm going to try to figure out how much absorption we're going to have and several other things. So, I'm throwing a slab. You don't need a slab roller to do a slab. If you throw your slab this way, catch the back and stretch it. Do it again, catch the back and stretch it. Flip it around, do the same thing. You can keep a nice even thickness of slab once you learn how to throw a slab. picking up all sorts of little junk that's on the canvas top here, but slab's pretty good. Okay, I'm back. I have my little square here, and I'm going to lay it down on the clay, sort of in the middle, and I want to measure five inches. Now, I'm going to cut a little slab out here. And I want my little slab to be I'm going to measure my slab and make it exactly five inches. Well, here's this end right here. And here's five inches right up here. Okay, why five inches instead of six inches or whatever? What I'm going to do is as this dries, I'm going to measure it again. And with five inches, I can figure out the percentage of shrinkage much better than if it were six or seven or some odd number, five inches just works for me. The less I have to figure, the better. It's about a quarter inch thick, and I'm going to dry it. I'm going to dry it laying this way, and I'm going to dry it laying the other way. Once it's totally dry, I'll take a measurement of it. And when I get ready to fire it, I'll support it on the ends like this, and then I can figure out after it fires, how much it shrinks, I mean how much it uh, deforms, that'll tell me a lot. So, five inches of clay. That's the bar that we're going to test. So, that's that for right now. We've got that going. We've done the plasticity test and we've got a shrinkage test going. This bar will also be used for absorption test. Once it's bisque fired, I'll put it in water and let it soak. I'll weigh it first, put it in water, let it soak, then weigh it again full of water, and you can figure out what percentage of uh, absorption it has. And then you can go ahead and fire it to a higher temperature and do the same thing. So by the time we're finished, we'll know how much it's going to warp, we'll know how much it's going to shrink, 
and we'll know if we actually want to use it. If uh, the clay shrinks more than about uh, 15 percent you can add a little fire clay to it. Uh, you can do things to help that shrinkage. If it shrinks much more than that I generally don't want to mess with it. If the absorption rates more than about uh, five or six percent I don't want to mess with that either. Even though you can come back and you can add some uh, red clay to it or something that will uh, help flux the body a little more. If I can't use the, at least 70% of the clay that's as dug, I don't want to I don't want to mess with it. I want to keep it as close to pure as possible. I'm lazy, folks. That's the way it is. Okay.